page number 434, Looking to Thee. Page 434, Looking to Thee, as we begin our morning worship service at this time. Let the Lord say amen. Y'all look like you've been in Christmas shopping all day yesterday. Y'all better wake up, amen. Amen. Wake up and get God some glory today. Somebody wish they could be up right now, but they're not. Some wish they could be sitting in where you're sitting at, but instead they're laying on a hospital bed, hoping for the church to pray for them to be able to sit up and just see the newness of light again. God is good to us all, despite what we do to ourselves. Page 434, looking to thee. If we all have it. Let us sing. Looking to thee from day to day, trusting thy grace along the way, knowing that thou will safely keep all that is thine. Sure of thy soul, redeeming love, sure of a crown of life above, singing thy praise, I press along, Savior divine. Looking to thee, trusting thy grace, I am as happy as a true soldier can be, hearing my own heavenly place, trusting thy love, I press along, looking to thee. Looking to thee for all I need, finding in thee a friend indeed. All of the burdens of the day, meekly I bear. Neither the foe nor storm I fear, Savior divine, for thou art near. Ready my cares and troubles all freely to share. Looking to thee, trusting thy grace, I am as happy as a true soldier can be, nearing my own heavenly place, trusting thy love, I press along, looking to thee. After a while in heaven bright, where there is neither sin nor night, I shall behold thee face to face, Jesus my own. Then with the saved ones gone before, I shall with rapture more and more, praise thee forever near the bright, beautiful throne. Looking to thee, trusting thy grace, I am as happy as a true soldier can be, nearing my own heavenly place, trusting thy love, I press along, looking to thee, amen, always looking to the Lord. Page 432, right next door, where the soul never dies. At the page 432, we'll have our scripture reading and prayer. Page 432, where the soul never dies. We'll sing verse number 1, 2, and 5 of where the soul never dies. Verse number 1, 2, and 5 of where the soul never dies. Come on, brother, say amen. 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 All right, y'all. All right, y'all. You ready, man? Man, you ready, bro? Okay. All right. Okay. Where the soul never dies. If we have it, let us sing. To Canaan's land, I'm on my way. Where the soul never dies. And my darkest night will turn to day. Where the soul never dies. Oh, 
church. This morning's scripture will come from the book of Matthew, chapter 1. We will begin in verse 18, and we'll conclude in chapter 2, verse 12. Once again, we will begin in the book of Matthew, chapter 1. Verse 18, and conclude in Matthew 2, verse 12. If you are at Matthew 1, and verse 18, say amen. Let us read. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and he took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Matthew 2, verse 1. 
Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, where thus it is written by the prophet, And thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of, Judea, of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I might come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they, they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him, they presented to him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Verse 12. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Blessed be the hearers, readers, and doers of his holy word. And at this point in time, Brother McClure will lead us in prayer. Let us bow and go to our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, thank you for another week. Thank you for getting us here to worship you in your house. Heavenly Father, thank you for getting us through well, almost a new year, blessing us and getting us through with all this pandemic and everything that's going on throughout the world. Heavenly Father, thank you for your son as we celebrate his birth in the holiday season. Watch all over us. Some may be grieving because they're missing family members during this time. Bless them. Some may be traveling to see family members. Watch over them. And Heavenly Father, bless the, the leadership of this house and our shepherd, Brother Atwater, as he brings us the word and let us lose it in our everyday lives. In Jesus' name, let's all say amen. No, we can say amen again. Y'all looking good this morning. Even Brian, Brian looks good. He got all, he got all black on today. <laughs> he must be mourning the ills of his dog this morning. <laughs> good to see him in his all black today. Y'all know Sister Grant, she's been smiling the last... 35 days since her sorority is celebrating a milestone achievement that my fraternity has helped them to achieve. It's good to see the AKA celebrate uh, achievement like the Kappas do on a regular basis. And it's also good to see Christians have an enjoyable time 
in the Lord's house. Amen. Brother Atwater is blessing the color blue on today as he prepares to come before us on this morning to generate some information to help us leave better than when we came, which is always important. And I'd be remiss to say that when I walked in the building this morning, I saw all these lovely decorations. I saw the foyer well decked out. And I just knew it was Sister Jones because L.C. said, you ought to see my house. I thought he was talking about the church building. He meant his actual house. So thanks, Sister Jones, and those who worked with her on getting it festive around here. And that's what it's all about. Amen. I also got a call from Brother Duke. You know, Brother Duke is the master hunter. And whatever he hunts, he eats. And he said, Deuce, I got some stuff for you. I'm like, all right, Brother Duke. Bring it on. From the rooter to the tutor, it's Brother Duke. <laughs> Amen. I love my people. I love y'all, man. Because everybody's different, but we all got the Lord in our hearts, one to, one together. I love our folk, man. It's good stuff. All right, let's turn over to page number uh, 520. I think we need to sing this song because of all my commentary this morning. I'm not ashamed. Page 520, I'm not ashamed. If you have it, let us sing. I'm not ashamed to own that Jesus came and died on Calvary, that by his blessed free atonement he prepared a way for me and fixed it so that I from bondage might forevermore be free. Oh, praise the Lord, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to speak for Jesus. I'm not ashamed to praise his name. I'm not ashamed to own his blessing. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to tell the sinners that the Lord will say this so if they will only come obeying he will cleanse and make them whole and he'll prepare for them an entrance to the everlasting fall. Oh praise the Lord I'm not ashamed I'm not ashamed to speak for Jesus I'm not ashamed to praise his name. I'm not ashamed to own his blessing. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to testify that he has cleansed my soul from sin and by his blessed Holy Spirit he has made me free with it. Yes, I am trying now to serve him and some precious soul to win. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to speak for Jesus. I'm not ashamed to praise his name. I'm not ashamed to own his blessings. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Amen. Never be ashamed. Turn to the back cover of our books. We're going to sing Our God. He is still is, always was, always will be, and is working today alive. Our God, he is alive. After this song, but that water will come before us with this blessed blue and give it to us some words of encouragement for this morning. Our God, he is alive. Verse number one, two, and four of Our God, he is alive. If we all have it, let us sing. There is beyond the desert blue and the God concealed from human sight and he is in 
disguise with heavenly hue and frame the world with his great mind. There is a God, he is alive, in him we live and we survive. From dust a God created man, he is a God, the great I am, and there was a long, long time ago, a God whose voice the prophets heard, and he is the God that we should know, who speaks from his inspired word. There is a God, he is alive, in him we live and we survive. From the saga created man, he is a God, the great I am, a God who sun upon a tree, and the light was willing there to give, that he from sin might set men free. And evermore with him could live. There is a God, he is alive. In him we live and we survive. From the star God, created man, he is a God. The great I am, there is a God, and he is alive, yes he is, and in him we live, we live, we live, and we live, Christians, every day is important. 
and you need to say the name Jesus. We shall continue our prayers for Michael Roberts um, and the Roberts family that he will sustain himself and get better. Those that are absent, let us pray for them. Those who drive by and those who uh, still stay connected electronically. This too shall pass. We're blessed now to have two vaccines that are coming. And I want to encourage you not to listen to the garbage you might hear relative to that. These vaccines do not put the virus in you. I just thought I would drop that. In my analysis and study, we have scientists that have gotten smarter than smart. And they know how to make your body generate what it needs to deal with this particular COVID-19. So when your time comes to take the vaccine, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but uh, you might give it consideration. Uh, when my time comes, I will take it. I don't know about my beloved son. He, he has not a problem with vaccines, but he has a problem with needles. He is frightened of just the thought of seeing an eight-inch needle. No, this and this particular vaccine has a long needle, and you all need to encourage him and pray for him uh, that he'll be able to handle Brother Hall a long needle. And uh, you know how we like to be masculine, but we become children under certain situations. So, so Robin, pray for him. He needs some help. Ah, uh, Christmas is coming. Was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. And not even a rat in the hood. <laughs> Lord, man, gosh, yeah, we don't have mouses, mice in the hood. We have rats in the hood. Uh, our nation needs incarnation. If there was ever a time that we need incarnation as a nation, it's now. Can you imagine sitting in the Congress bickering over whether to feed people? As rich as we are, we waste more money than we spend. But this too shall pass. Hastening over whether to send out $600 and they'll send out billions to people who don't need it. And then we have number 45 who's trying to recount the vote. He wants to send Brother Hall and Brother Slay and our military people into Georgia and so forth and <laughs> recount the vote. This reminds me of the days of Herod. Ah, uh, we need an incarnation. Divinity must intersect with humanity. Flesh must commingle with the Holy Spirit. The 
earthly man must embrace the heavenly son of man. You may not like Jesus, but you need him. You may not like the vaccine, but you're going to need it. There are certain things we don't like and we don't want, but you need it. The world is wild. Our nation is nasty. People are polluted. Homes house hate. Humans are polarized. And the future looks futile. But, 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 Jesus brought truth. Jesus enabled us to recognize truth. Do you know that most people in the United States now are so confused they don't know when they see truth? So many lies have been told and we don't know when we see truth and what to believe. Jesus connects God with the creation. Jesus is the source of what we need. We need grace, we need mercy, and we need a recreation. Jesus is the source of that. Jesus gives us vision to see the unseen. The more you embrace Jesus, the more you can see the calamity before it comes and then you can take corrective action because Jesus guides his people unknowingly, unknowingly we are guided and we avoid certain situations only because of our relationship with Jesus. All of us we have within the confines of our family somebody possibly that has passed on because of COVID-19. Because they were too stubborn and too obstinate just to put on a mask to wash their hands and don't breathe on somebody. We have people like that. But Jesus, the world can become tame. With Jesus, our nation can become nice. With Jesus, people can become pure. With Jesus, homes can become heavenly. When you go to your home, I don't know what happens behind those closed doors, but when I see you come out, and if your attitude is not as it ought to be, something went on behind those closed doors that should not have gone on behind those closed doors. Jesus makes people peacemakers. We need peacemakers now. There is no better time than for a man like Joe Biden to step into the presidency. Some people say, well, he's 78, he's old. You need an old man. See, young people are too wild. They have youthful indiscretions. They're too much in a hurry. They're not patient. But Joe is just patient. He said, I'll be around January the 20th. He can't talk to people. They, they won't listen to him. He said, I'll be around January the 20th. Now, those of you, just to help Joe out, if you know somebody in Georgia, call them and tell them your vote counts. If there's anybody walking the face of the earth now, if Jesus and his family, if, if his family, Joseph and Mary, can leave Nazareth and go to Bethlehem to vote and to pay taxes, I think you can vote and pay taxes. I realize if you're from Richmond, Indiana, and you can't text, send a Morris code. Lord have mercy. Ah, Isom is all right. He's all right. With Jesus, the future is fruitful. They held up on getting my stimulus check out 
Because, now watch this. Now watch, I'm going to show you how. See, when you got Jesus, you see stuff. They, 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 the, the Republicans wanted to hold up because they wanted the Federal Reserve not have the ability to assist small businesses. Now, what they're doing is they want to set up a trap because they know that our country right now is in a recession, going into a deeper recession, and Joe Biden is going to have to feed the economy in order to turn the recession around. They want to lock him down. They want to help him to be a failure. I, 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 the, the Lord will not allow those kinds of things to happen. See, sometimes people set up a trap and they hang themselves in their own trap. Hang themselves. Don't like somebody. And the very person you don't like is the one to put the shot in your arm. Amen. Jesus. We need the incarnation. Terry, what is incarnation? I've already said it. It's where divinity connects to humanity. Jesus, his daddy, was divine. His mother was fleshly. They came together. Well, how is that possible? I don't know. God just did it. As a matter of fact, how are you possible? God just did it. Why are you still alive right now? God just did it. You can't explain it. You can't explain it. We got a little Isaiah coming. And the mother can't explain it. Lord have mercy. You better talk to him too. Tell him I want to got candy for him. <laughs> Jesus. The baby Jesus. I want my young people to understand that the baby Jesus, though he created the tree that we call the Christmas tree, but he's more important than the tree. Lord have mercy. Ah, that he can reach down and make you a better person. Because we, as I said on last large day, we are not squatters, we are not fugitives, we are not vagabonds, but we are pilgrims just passing through. And as we pass through, we're going home, we're going home. Right now you don't have a home, but you're going home. Just passing through. Let me analyze the Christ child for just a moment. Let's take a look at his entrance into the world. In Matthew chapter 1, thanks to Brother Isom for so eloquently uh, reading. At least in Richmond, he did learn how to read. Bless his beloved heart. Lord, but we, we, we love Isom. Isom's just a good guy, but we like to beat up on him. I like to beat up on Hall, too. Hall thinks he's big, bad, and, and tough. But now in verse number 18, the Bible says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph. See, they were dating one another. They were betrothed. And in that day and time, they spent a lot of time getting together and getting ready for marriage. Now we just run down to the justice of peace and hook up and stay together for 90 days, and then all of a sudden we want a divorce. You know, you understand what I'm saying? I just thought I'd drop that while I'm passing by. That's why I like to counsel people. Anybody that does not have some counseling before they get married, they need some counseling. That's a lifetime contract when you marry. And even at that, we all make mistakes. My wife has made hers. You know, I don't make no mistakes. Lord have mercy. Amen. I just thought I'd pass that one by. Yeah, she wouldn't agree with that, but that's okay. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit intersected the flesh. Actually, some will say, well, you know, how, how can you have sex with the Holy Spirit? See, God plants the Holy Spirit. He plants, in fact, as a Christian, when one is baptized, the Holy Spirit is planted in you such that when you see the Word, it forces you and encourages you to act righteously, even though you may not, but you know what you ought to do. And when you don't do it, the Holy Spirit turns up the guilt button and makes you feel guilty for what you did not do. 
That's why as a more mature minister now, I don't worry about church folk like I used to because I know the Lord has the guilt button. And you can be a devil all you want to, but when the guilt button turns up, you know when you're wrong and you know what you ought to do to get yourself right. You know what it ought to be. His entrance into the world, it's amazing, it's amazing. They say at Motel 6, we'll leave the light on for you. He arrived at his Motel 6 and the light was not on. As a matter of fact, he had no reservation. As a matter of fact, he couldn't get the continental breakfast. As a matter of fact, he had no shower. He had no room to no restroom. He had none of that when he arrived at the Motel 6. He had to step out, go outside. There was no heat to take care of him on his entrance. The hospitals were filled with COVID-19 victims. Food lines were long by starving poor people. The government with plenty starving the poor. His stepdaddy was ready to leave his mother. Joseph said, ah, oh, what, 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 what? What, what, what man messing with my thing? Ah, I'm not, I'm not hanging with this mess. The God of heaven stepped down and said, Joseph, don't mess with her. This is something special. See, sometimes you got to put up with what you don't want to put up with. Joseph, her husband, being a just man. See, Joseph, now I want you to understand, Joseph wasn't, wasn't wandering around in the streets and smoking weed and running from pillar to post and lady to lady. He was a just man. I, you know, I got a woman I thought was a just woman. But all of a sudden, she's pregnant. How can that be? Joseph forgot his history. See, history said that that was going to happen. See, sometimes history tells us what's going to happen to us. We just sometimes, we're so close to it, we don't see the blessings working in our own lives until after it's all over. Then all of a sudden, well, how did I make it this far? I remember some 45 years ago when I started the ministry at 10th Street Church of Christ, I told the church, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to start up right now. I don't need no contract, no salary. I'll just start up, and when you get somebody else, then I'll sit down. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I'm still waiting on them to get somebody else right now. And I, I, I tell you when, when you, when you get somebody else, you ain't going to get a Terry Atwater. I'm on, there's only one of me. There's only one of me that, that, that will work like I work. There's only one of me that put forth the evidence that I put forth. There's only one, only one clone. But when you get somebody else, I'll step back. Lord, have mercy. His stepdaddy was ready to leave. But God stepped in and told him to hold up. She's your wife. That's the entrance. That's the entrance. Now let's take a look at the engagement. So you got the entrance to the world for Jesus, and then you have the engagement when he arrived in the world. He steps into Bethlehem. Bethlehem, well, that's where Ruth found her husband. In Bethlehem, that's a city of bread. Bethlehem is where Naomi left because she was starving to death and she saw a famine. How, what our eyes see, sometimes we run because of what our eyes see. And our eyes sometimes will make us run away from our blessings. Sometimes you got to close your eyes, turn on the Lord and try to see what's beyond what your eyes see. Don't get always caught up on what you see. What somebody said to you and how they looked at you and how they didn't shake your hand and all that kind of stuff. Amen. Get away from that kind of stuff. His engagement in Bethlehem. He runs into a hateful Herod. See, we're always going to run into some hateful folk. I didn't know he was so hateful. Well, you're always going to run into some hateful folk. Ah, he was half Jew. Herod was half Jew, by the way. Also, he came out of the Edomites. You know who the Edomites are? They came out of Cain. Cain is the beginning of the Edomite. You know, Cain killed Abel, you know. You know, you know, God put a mark on Cain. God made Cain a vagabond. God, God made Cain a fugitive. God, in fact, Cain was scared. Cain said, they are killed because said, no, they won't. I'm going to put a mark. See, sometimes God will mark those bad folk. God will let you walk around with your badness 
and let people pr- and protect you from getting hurt because of your badness. Herod was a mean dude. But Herod, like a lot of us, had a flaw. He had a whole lot of flaws, but one flaw he had was suspicious. He was suspicious of anybody that would mess with his power. It's kind of like number 45 sitting in the White House. He, he's suspicious of anybody that's messing with his power. I didn't, I can't lose. They got some bad voting machines. I can't lose. You know, goodness gracious. Just, just those, just Philadelphia, just Atlanta, you, you know, just, 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 just Chicago, you know, just, just, just Detroit, Sister McCullough, well, then, you know, the, 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 that's, that's where I lost at. Why did you just lose there? It is because you being who you are, there are some folk that you don't like, and you know you got to pay the price because you lost because those folk decided to vote. That's why you lost. That's why you lost. Sometimes the Lord has a way of that which we hate. Jesus, the Christ child, has a way of turning the table. They didn't leave a light on for him, but he is the light. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the light, and also I am the light. They didn't have a light for me. I just turned, you know, in Genesis chapter 1, God said, let there be light, and there was light. There was light before there was ever a sun, moon, and stars. The Lord provides his, if you don't turn the light on, he'll turn the light on for you. He said, now, as he said to us as Christians, let your light shine before men that they might see your good work. If you don't turn the light on, the Lord will turn the light on and he'll shine it on you. Lord have mercy. His engagement. Herod was suspicious. He killed anybody that was a threat to him in Matthew chapter 2. Verse 18, in Ramah was there a voice heard lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. Herod, like Pharaoh, wanted to kill the children. And it wasn't so much that he wanted to kill the children. He was suspicious of somebody taking his position. And since he didn't have the wisdom to figure it out, all he had to do was just open up the Torah. He could have figured it out. All he he had to do was just open up the Bible. He would have gotten an answer. It's just kind of like Columbus. All Columbus had to do was open up the Bible and find that the earth was a circle. That's all he had to do. It's amazing how we won't open up the source of information. When you got problems in your life, just open up the Bible. If you don't know how to read it in the Bible, go to somebody that can help you to read the Bible, help you to understand it more perfectly. That's all he had to do. All Herod had to do was just open up the Bible. He would have found out what was going on. But he didn't. He was suspicious. Herod. And finally Herod died. A guy named Achilles stepped in. Of course, Jesus, in the meantime, his parents, they took him over into Egypt. We'll get to that in just a moment. But let's look at the wise. There there was another engagement. The wise men came from the east. See, the Lord always wants to get the east and the west to come together. See, sometimes the east and the west are divided. We got a divided world right now. The east is divided from the west. In fact, in our United States, almost the west is divided from the east. But the Lord has a way of bringing them together. In, in, in Matthew chapter 2 and verse number 11, when the wise men showed up, when they were coming to the house, they came to where Jesus, where the Christ child was. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother. They didn't come in there telling Mary how to take care of her baby. They didn't come in there and say, you ought to wash that child. That child is dirty. You ought to get that child out of here with all these animals and so forth. It's unclean for that child to be in here. You're not giving that child the right kind of food. No, they just dropped down and they prayed. And they worshiped him. And then they gave him some gifts. That's the reason why when we come into the house of the Lord, we give gifts to the the Christ child. And you notice they didn't worry about what they were going to do with the gift. They just gave the gifts. They gave some gold. Well, gold is something that you give, that's for kings. You give gold to kings. But how can this be a king? He, 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 He has no light. He has no... 
facilities? How, how, how can this be a king? How can this be a king? Well, my, my good book tells me he's not only a king, but he's king of kings. He is Lord of lords, even though he's a child right now, but he's king of king and Lord of lords. And they gave him gold. They gave him gold. Not only that, they gave him frankincense. Frankincense is what you give to priests. Uh, looking at the Latin pontex, pontex, the pontiff, priest, priest, priest. Well, wh what's a priest? A bridge builder. Well, how can a little old child that didn't even have a motel six room? How in the world can that child be a bridge builder? Well, just give the child time. You know, the Lord always said, in the fullness of time. See, everything the Lord does is done in the fullness of time. Your life, your, your life, it's in the fullness of time. When your purpose is done, the Lord will finish you off and then move you into another realm. In the fullness of time. Christ's birth was in the fullness of time. Christ's death was in the fullness of time. His ascension to heaven was in the fullness of time. The ending of the Christian age will be in the fullness of time. In the fullness of time. When God gets into the fullness of time, he'll make that decision. The wise men, they gave frankincense to the bridge builder. And then they gave myrrh. Myrrh is what you give to a dying person. But why would you give myrrh to somebody? Are you, you count on him to die? Well, they should have known. They should have known that he's going to die. He came to die. So they gave him his myrrh early and his honor because he's going to die. But not only that, he came not only to die, but he came to live. He died so he could live. He died so he could tell those of us that are suspicious of the resurrection that since he was resurrected, we will be resurrected. I don't care what they say philosophically in the school that you went to. When you go to the Bible school, you will be resurrected. You will be. And now, finally, you have his entrance into the world. You have his engagement in Bethlehem. And then we have his escape to Egypt. Well, Atwater, why did he escape to Egypt? Because Hosea said 700 years before it all happened, he was called out of Egypt. So if he was called out of Egypt, he had to go to Egypt. You can't be called out unless you get in. You can't be a saint called out of the world unless you are in the world. When you're in the world and you're called out, the Christ child is in the business of calling you out. Jesus was called out of Egypt, but he had to escape to Egypt because he had to get away from uh, the tribulation of Herod. A, Egypt was a nation of refuge. Now, let me talk to you seriously, ladies and gentlemen. I love every last one of you. We all need a place to go for refuge. When your circumstances of life pound you into the ground, you need a place of refuge. When your best friend becomes your enemy. You need a place of refuge. When your job closes and you didn't plan on it, you need a place of refuge. I had another minister ask me, Brother Adwater, how are you all in North Shore making it? We just have a place of refuge. We have people that do stuff that's good. We have a place of refuge. You must have a place of refuge. And, and, and don't count on your family members to be your place of refuge. Because sometimes your own family will turn you down. I know some say, well, that's blood. That's blood. Let me tell you something. The best blood you can have is the blood of Jesus. Lord have mercy. The Christ child's blood is deeper than any other blood there is. He fled to Egypt as his place of refuge. He, he fled there to escape death. Herod died or Caelus came in and took over. Achaelus was just a bad king too. See, what happens is, 
bad people are developed when they hang around bad folk. You know, you hear that old saying, birds of a feather flock together. You get two devils together, they're going to be devils when, they, when, when it's all over with. You understand? As a matter of fact, Achilles, he tried to be badder than, he tried to be the Herod of Herods. He tried to be worse than Herod. A bad king, he tried to do, do what Herod did not get done. Therefore, therefore, since Achilles was in business, God has, has the fullness of time. And the fullness of time is that Christ must die when it's time for him to die. Archelaus is not going to kill him. Herod is not going to kill him. So now, Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. Let's talk to the head of the house. Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. Now, now, it's time for you. Now, it's in the fullness of time now. It's time for you to leave Egypt now. But I want you to head back. But don't stop in Bethlehem this time. When you come back this time, swing on up to Nazareth and spend some time in Nazareth. That's where I want you to go. Don't go where Achilles is now. Go to Nazareth. Jesus, he grew up in Nazareth. The Bible says that he grew in wisdom and in knowledge and in stature and in favor with God and man in Luke chapter 2 and verse number 52. He came back to the little city of Nazareth. In some closing admonitions, let me share this with you. The incarnate manifests a whole lot of blessings. That's why our nation needs the incarnate. It needs Jesus. It needs Jesus as Jesus really is. Because when the human gets Jesus, the ignorance of the Messiah becomes instruction of how he functions. When the human intersects with the heavenly, the natural intersects the supernatural. Lord have mercy. Y'all with me on that? See, see, there, there, there are some things that happen that's supernatural. You cannot explain. See, you, 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 we, we, we wear these masks, right? We wear these masks. But, 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 see, the supernatural had the foresight that when we were born, little baby Isaiah Already, God is setting up, he's setting up his immune system such that when he is born, he's going to come in contact with some messy folk. And the immune system automatically goes to it. That's the supernatural. You know, that they held up Christ for eight days. Why they hold him up for eight days before they went to the temple? That is to allow his immune system to get up to maximum operation. Then they took him to the temple. Lord, have mercy. The supernatural covers us in so many ways. All righty? The supernatural. The careless, they receive care. We need care. The incarnate gives us care. He's committed to us. Though, though, though you're shaky in your commitment, you show up at church when you feel like it. And it's not about when you feel like it. The Lord puts, your, puts the feeling in you. He gives you your help. As a matter of fact, if you're able to crawl, you ought to crawl to where Jesus is. We're, we're commanded on the first day of the week to assemble. The unavailable Roman gods overshadowed by an available Jewish God. The incarnate moved the people away from the Roman gods, Zeus and Jupiter and all those fictitious gods. But there was one theory, the, theistic God, and that is the God of the Jews that also became the God of the Gentiles. Ye are one in Christ Jesus. That is the incarnate God. Not only that, the incarnate helps us to get rid of radicalism, racism. It becomes redemption and reconciliation. The incarnate helps the nasty to be transformed into niceness. The incarnation, the incarnation, the, 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 the accusation converts us into acclamation. See, we, 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 we are a people that like to accuse others, but we don't look at ourselves. But when I come in contact with the incarnate, then I acclaim, then I, then, then I proclaim, I acclaim, and I reclaim myself. And I don't spend time trying to accuse you of what you're doing, but I look at Terry Atwater. When I make him better, then you can become better. When I'm around the incarnate, trials and tribulation may come, but they are transformed into triumph and truth. When I'm around the incarnate, 
I might have hate, I might have evil, but it becomes hospitality and eternal life. When I'm around the incarnate, the Christ child in the manger becomes the Christian in the church of Christ. May God bless every last one of you. Let us have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that you sent the incarnate to become a part of us. We're thankful for everything that you do for us. We're nearing the end of 2020. You have planted 2020 as a year that we will never forget. It is a teaching year. It is a year of change. It is a year of adjustment. It is a year where the world sees the poor different than before. It is a year where we call for the government, they don't answer. We call for the job, they don't answer. We call for the doctors, they're overwhelmed. But when we call for Jesus, he gives us a comfort that we can't explain. We pray that you will bless us as we go through the rest of the day, the rest of the week, as we wind up this year, if it be your will. And may we look forward to 2021 being an even greater year. Forgive us for our sins. Help us to have the love that we ought to have. Help us to be like the Christ child. Though I'm treated harshly, I will return it with happiness. These blessings we ask in thy name. Amen. It might be somebody that needs prayer. It might be somebody who wants to be baptized. It might be somebody who thinks that church is not important. Now let me say this to you. Before